That verse is in the book of Revelation. Niko katika kitabu cha Ufunuo. Chapter 4:14. Wa Ufunuo 14. And verse 13. Mstari wa 13. Revelation chapter 14 verse 13. Ufunuo 14 13. The Bible says then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Nikaisikia sauti kutoka binguni kisema, Andika, heri wafu wafao katika buwana tangu sasa, Naam, asema roho, wapate kupumzika baada ya tabu zao, kwa kuwa matendo yao ya fuatana nao. Bwana sifiwe. Bwana, amen. Let's pray. Na tuombe. Father in Jesus name we thank you for your word. Baba katika jina la Yesu tuwakushukuru kwa ajili ya neno lako. We commit our ears and our hearts to you. Tumeyaweka masikio yetu na roho zetu kwako. Speak to us by your spirit. Tunenee kwa roho wako. Every spirit that exalts itself against your word we bind it in Jesus mighty name. Na roho yote ijinu yao kinyume na neno lako tuwaifunga katika jina la Yesu. And we pray that our hearts shall be obedient to your word. Na tunaomba ya kwamba roho zetu zitaweza kutii neno lako. And your will. Na mapenzi yako. In the name of Jesus Christ. Katika jina la Yesu Christo. So Lord teach us from your word. Kwa hivyo bwa na tufundishe kwa neno lako. And make us to be the way you want us to be. Na utufanya kuwa vile unataka tuwe. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Amen. I would like to begin by saying that uh, by reading a verse that says brethren are the dead, I don't want you dead. Na kwa kuanza na kulisoma neno andiko hili na nena kuhusu waliokufa sitaki nyinyi mufe. Fact I've been praying that the members of this congregation shall live long. Lakini nimekuwa nikiomba kwamba kusanyiko la kanisa hili laweza aishi sana. I want you to live long. Ningelipenda muishi sana. So I'm not reading this because I desire you dead. Na kwa hivyo sisomi hili neno ili nataka ili mufe. Did I prophesy you live long? Na hata hivyo naatabiri ya kwamba mtaishi zaidi. But the zaidi. grace of God. Kwa neema ya Mungu. Because what we ask for we receive from the Lord. Maana lolote tunaloliuliza twalipata kutoka kwa Bwana. However, yapokuwa it is known that one day. Inajulikana kwamba siku moja it's appointed for man wants to die. Imetengwa kwa mtu kufa. So one day you and I shall actually live this earth. Na kwa hivyo mimi na wewe siku moja tu tutaondoka katika ulimwengu huu. And uh, unfortunately most people think that we have just been finished we will not be finished we have gone somewhere else Na pengine watu wanafikiria kwamba tunaisha lakini tunaenda mahali pengine But while we are here Lakini ijapo tuko tu hapa It is good to know that we are getting free employed Ni tunafani vizuri kujua ya kwamba tumepewa kazi In the purpose for which God has brought us here Kwa lile kusudi ambalo Mungu ametuweka hapa Hallelujah Hallelujah So that our lives shall be useful Ili maisha yetu yawe ya faida to our God who made us kwa Mungu wetu ambaye alituumba in his image na akatuumba kwa mfano wake hallelujah hallelujah well, so we need to live lives of purpose kwa hivyo tunafaa kuishi maisha yaliyo na kusudi and today i want to talk about living for a higher purpose na kwa hivyo nanena kuhusu kuishi katika kusudi lililo kuu living for a higher purpose kuishi kwa sababu ya kusudi lililo kuu when we were in high school tulipokuwa katika shule ya upili somebody asked us this question mtu akatuuliza swali hili ah what will happen after you reach form 4 itakuwaaje utakapofika kidato cha 4 of course that time form 4 used to be long way off na wakati huo kidato cha 4 kilikuwa mbali sana but anyway we thought that actually when we were in form 1 we thought by the time we are informed for maybe the world would have been over. Na tulipokuwa katika kidato cha kwanza tuka tunafikiria kwamba tukifika kidato cha 4 pengine ulimwengu utakuwa umekwisha. No, you are supposed to be told about 197. You finish school in 1972. Form 4 1972. Yaani unamaliza kidato cha 4 miaka ya 72. And that time when I was in the 60s to year 1972 it looks to be so far away. Na hiyo ikiwa miaka ya 60 miaka ya 72 ilikuwa inakaa mbali sana. I thought the world would be over by then. Na hata nilikuwa nafikiri ulimwengu utakuwa umeisha. I didn't know that we come to the year 1990s. Siku inajua kwamba itafikia miaka ya miaka 90. 2000 and something. Miaka ya 2020 na kitu. Now ya 2020 something. Sasa tuko miaka 20 ya 2020 na kitu. Anyway, it looks so far off. Yaani inakaa mbali sana. But one question I want to ask is this. Lakini swali nilikuwa nauliza ni hili. Ah uh, after form 4. Baada ya kidato cha 4, what do you expect to happen? Unatarajia itakuwaje? And someone said, well, I think I'll get a job. 
Mwingine akasema kwamba naona kama nitapata kazi. Then, and then na akaulia alafu uh, I'll get some good money. Nitapata pesa nzuri. And then na baada halafu uh, maybe I'll get married. Pengine nitaoa. And then na halafu I'll have children. Nitapata watoto. And then halafu I'm beginning to ask what what the next. Akasema sasa lililofuata ni gani tena? And uh, maybe I'll buy a house. Pengine ninunue nyumba. And then alafu and then when you are told, and then after that what you had after that what you had, what you do and then and then and then yani waulizo alafu some of the finance said and then i'll die na mwishowe utasema kwamba the head is and then i'll die mwishowe nitakufa wow so be it what they you mean you do all those things just in order to die yani una unafanya mambo hayo yote alafu mwishowe ufe and it brings you to the point of where <laughs> A wise man called Solomon said vanity is vanity all is vanity Inatuleta mahali ambapo mwenye alikuwa na hekima Solomon akasema ya kwamba yote ni ubatili mtupu You know when you think about life Unajua unapofikiria kuhusu maisha If life is just about actually earning Kama maisha tu ni kupata pesa eating kula drinking kunywa sleeping kulala in order to wait for death ili ungojee kifo hey there is no purpose basi hayo hayo maisha hayana makusudi hayana malengo if everything is just ending you die yani kama mambo yote yanaisha mwisho ni kifo and, pa, and perhaps if you have been in a funeral kama umekuwa katika mazishi you, you picture yourself being put in a box utajihurumia kuwekwa katika sanduku and then being actually put in a, in a pit na hata uwekwe katika shimo and the soil being alaf alaf kisha ufunikwe na mchanga and then you become just past tense na ukuje usahaulike if that's all there is to life na kama hiyo yote ndio ya, ya, ya maisha you wonder is there a point then unashanga then unajiuliza kuna hayo sababu kweli well if that's all you see kama hiyo ndio tu unaona there is no point basi hakuna maana but lakini We have a God given purpose. Lakini tunalo lengo ambalo tumepewa na Mungu. And we live our life to the full and to satisfaction because we know we are living for a purpose that is higher than us. Na tunaishi maisha ya utimilifu ni kwa sababu tunajua kwamba kunalo lengo. And the great satisfaction in life is not about you. Na kutosheleka kuliko kuzuri maisha ni mwako sio kwa sababu you do for yourself. Si kwa sababu ya kudu wako wewe mwenyewe. It's about what you do. Lakini ni kuhusu kile unachokifanya. Oh God kwa Mungu so what you do for humanity kile unachowafanyia wanadamu kile unachowafanyia wengine so here the bible tells us na kwa hivyo hapa biblia inatuambia i heard a voice saying nikasikia sauti ikisema blessed are the dead who die in the lord from now hence forth kubarikiwa ni wale wanakufa katika bwana that they may rest from their labors ili waweze kupumzika katika taabiko lao and their works follow them na kazi zao zitawafuata they are works for them kazi zao zinawafuata praise the name of the lord bwana yesu asifiwe jesus said the quality of life yesu akasema maisha yaliyo mema does not depend on the abundance of things haijalishi haitegemei wingi wa mali but you might discover that actually the richest people are some of the most miserable people na hakika watu wale ambao ni matajiri sana ndio walio na shida kuu na wanda used to have a, a television series whose title was the rich also ndio maana tulikuwa na kipindi you saw it also uh-huh. the rich also cry yani hata matajiri hulia and sometimes i remember those days when you we were young na nakumbuka siku zile nilipokuwa mdogo living in those round huts tukiishi katika ile vyumba vya vya mzingiro made of mud imetengenezwa na matope with a roof made of grass na hata pala yake ni la nyasi The whole family living in one room. Na family mzima iliishi katika kichumba kimoja. Our sitting room was actually centered on three stones. Na sebule yetu ilikuwa katikati ya mawe matatu. And that was the fireplace. Yaani ilikuwa ni mahali pa kuhakisha moto. We warmed ourselves there. Tulikuwa tujiweka joto pale. We cooked our food there. Na tukapika hapo. And our storage was actually just above us. Na hata mahali petu pa kuweka vitu palikuwa juu yetu hapo. And uh, we used to sleep with our goods. Na tulikuwa tunalala na mbuzi zetu. 
and with the chicken in the same room na kuku pia mahali pamoja and when we sit there by the fireplace na tunapozunguka ule moto warming ourselves tukijiweka joto those are the days we never knew how to wear shoes we had no shoes sikuza tuko tunajua kuvaa viatu kutukwa na viatu oh and sometimes we laugh na watungelicheka and we can just and be happy na tunafurahi so when you hear the rich also cry you wonder how na unasikia kwamba kama matajiri wanalia unashanga vipi If we can rejoice when we have nothing. Kama tunaweza furahi na hatuna kitu. People who have a lot should rejoice even more. Na wale wako nazo basi wanafaa kufurahi zaidi. We know the people who actually pass us with cars brewing dust on us. Tulifikiri wale they were not tamax. Tulifikiria kwamba wale ambao walikuwa wanatupita na magari na tuweka vumbi. Unajua kati wakukwa na We thought they were very happy. Tulifikiri wako na furaha sana. So to hear they also cry. Is it? Hi. Tukasikia wanalia tukashinda. Like, Tukashanga basi maana ya maisha ni nini kama pia matajiri hulia. Jesus said. Yesu akasema. That the quality of life does not depend on the abundance of things. Ya kwamba uzuri wa maisha ama wema wa maisha utegemei na wingi wa mali. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And by the way the family may have more than me you are not more fortunate than me. Na ile familia iliko na zaidi kunili mimi si nzuri kunipea ni mshinda mimi. You are not more blessed than me. Ana hata Hawana baraka kuniliko mimi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know there are a lot of people who think that being blessed means having a lot of money. Unajua wengine wanafikiria kwamba kubarikiwa ni kwamba pesa nyingi. Having a nice house. Kuwa na nyumba nzuri. And a nice car. Na kuwa na gari nzuri. And good bank accounts. Na hata ma- and pesa have lands and properties. Na una mali nyingi. Oh, well, that's not actually the end of being blessed. Hiyo sio mwisho wa kubarikiwa. And how none and all those of all those but could be blessed more than you. Na unaweza kuona vitu vyote hivyo lakini kwa nimebarikiwa kukuliko wewe. Because I'm living a life of purpose. Maana naishi maisha yaliyo na malengo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And how many people Na ili hali watu wengi who have their lives ambao wako na wakiwa na njia zao kufikishwa kikomo. At the end when they die their life is finished. Yaani wanapokufa maisha yao inaishia hapo na inasahaulika. The people who live for a higher purpose. Watu wanaoishi katika lengo lililo kwa. They have an everlasting memorial. Wako na na kukumbusho wa milele. Remember in Mark chapter 14 verse 8. Kumbuka katika Mariko 14:8. Jesus said about a woman who poured oil on his feet. Yesu akasema akanena kuhusu ile mwanamke aliyemwagilia mafuta miguuni pake. It appeared like something other than like. Yaani ilika kama kitu ambacho hakikupendeka. But she did an act out of love for the master. Lakini yeye alifanya katika upendo. And Jesus said. Na Yesu akasema. This that she has done. Ya kwamba hiki ambacho amekifanya. Wherever the gospel shall be preached. Mahali popote injili itahubiriwa. What she has done shall be told for a memorial. Hichi ambacho amekifanya kitasemeka kitasemwa kwa sababu ya ukumbusho. Even today we remember her. Hata leo leo twamkumbuka. Can you remember the richest man in the time of Jesus? Je waweza kumbuka mtu yule tajiri wakati wa Yesu? Have you have, have read the history? Je unawe ushaisoma historia yake? Oh, the, the richest man in the time of Moses. Ya kwamba ya huyo mtu ambaye alikuwa tajiri sana wakati wa Musa. They are not known. Hawajulikani. But <laughs> Moses who had nothing is known. Lakini Musa ambaye hakuwa kitu anajulikana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People are deceived. Watu wanadanganyika. That when you have more, ya kwamba unapokuwa na mengi, you'll be happier. Una atutakuwa na furaha. If you're not happy with little, the little you have. Kama hauna furaha na kidogo ulicho nacho. You will not be happy even if you have more millions. Hautakuwa na furaha hata ukiwa na mamilioni mengi. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Have you have heard of Swiss people who are rich committing suicide? Nimeshaisikia watu matajiri sana wakijinyonga. Some of the people commit suicide are not the people who are actually poor and miserable. Wale watu ambao wanajiweka kitanzi sio wale tu masikini ambao wako na shida. One case that baffled us some time ago. Eh jambo moja ambalo lilitushangaza siku moja. In the 70s when I was in high school. Katika miaka ya 70 nilipokuwa katika shule ya upili. Is of a high school student. Ni kuhusu mwanafunzi mmoja katika shule ya upili. Who was in form 6. Ambaye alikuwa katika kidato cha 6. He was the best student in that class. Alikuwa mwanafunzi mzuri zaidi katika darasa hilo. When they did the MOOCs for A level. Walipokuwa wanafanya mitihani yao. He got everything A A A Alipata kila kitu alama ya a a a and uh, he came from a rich family na alikutoka katika familia ambayo ni tajiri and unfortunately lakini kwa kwa huzuni before the final examination kabla ya siku ya mtihani wa mwisho he took a rope akachukua kamba when in one corner of the school akaenda katika kona moja ya shule and hanged himself akajinyonga and he left a note na akaweka akaacha ki kikaratasi ameandika and the note was saying na hiyo kikaratasi kilikuwa kinasema i can't bear to leave 
Mimi siwezi vumilia kuishi. Because God is unfair. Maana Mungu si mwenye haki. And he says, Na akasema, I was born healthy. Nilizaliwa na afya. And God ordered for me to be born in a rich family. Na Mungu akanikusudia nikazaliwa katika familia iliyo tajiri. While there are other people. Ili hali kuna watu wengine. Who are sickly. Ambao ni wagonjwa. And they in poor families. Na wanatoka katika familia maskini. Then God gave me an intelligent brain. Na Mungu akanipa akili nyingi. I could have survived in any school poor, even a poor school. Ningeweza kustahimili hata shule ambayo ni ya umaskini sana. But he brings me to a school. Lakini akaleta katika shule. That is so good. Ambayo ile ni nzuri sana. And instead of giving to those poorest people. Badala awape wale ambao ni masikini. He is not fair. Yaani Mungu anabagua. You know that was saying that God should have brought actually the children from poor Yaani anasema watu Mungu angelileta watoto into this school. Yaani angeleta watoto wa masikini katika shule hii. Because again my parents could have afforded to take me to private schools. Maana wazazi wangu angeliweza kunipeleka katika shule hii binafsi. Maana wako na pesa. Why does God allow me to be brought to a public school? Kwa nini Mungu akaniruhusu niwe katika shule ya the best sekai. in the country? Ambao ni nzuri katika nchi. Why I have the best brains? Mali, mali kuna uh, akili zile nzuri. Instead of giving the needy those schools. Badala wapatiwa wanaohitaji shule kama hizo. I can be able to live. Mimi sitastahimili kuishi. That was a note he hung himself. Hicho ndicho kijakaratasi alichoandika na akajinyonga. Does it make sense? Je, yaleta maana kweli? The reason why you hear people hang themselves. Wakati don't, Don't think that they said they were so miserable. Usifikiri lile jamaa ambalo linafanya watu wajinyonge ni kwa sababu ya shida kubwa. Chances are some of us who have never thought on committing suicide have more problems than those who have died. Eh nafasi ni kwamba kuna wengi ambao wangelijinyonga kwa sababu ya shida wanazopitia lakini hawajafanya hivyo. I'm saying that those of us who have never thought of committing suicide we have more problems than people who have committed suicide. Yaani ninasema ya kwamba sisi ambayo tuko na shida nyingi Nasema sisi as bao hatujatafakari kujinyonga who have not thought about hanging ourselves. Labda tuna shida nyingi zaidi. Maybe we have more problem kuliko wale wamejitia kitanzi more than those who have hung themselves mbona sifiwe praise the name of the lord the secret of life is on the basis of a higher relationship siri ya maisha imewekwa juu ya msingi ya mambo ya kijuu a higher purpose kuslengo la juu and here in the bible na biblia we find the bible saying blessed Tunapata Biblia inasema ya kwamba kubarikiwa. Our people who die in the Lord from now henceforth. Ni wale ambao wanakufa katika Kristo tangu sasa. And the end part says because their works follow them. Na mwisho inasema ya kwamba maana kazi zao zinawafuata. Do you know where they are blessed? Unajua ni kwa nini wamebarikiwa? Not because of what they have. Sio kwa sababu ya walicho nacho. But because of what they are doing. Lakini kwa sababu ya kile wanachokifanya. If you are doing something beautiful, beautiful for the Lord. Kama unafanya kitu cha kupendeza kwa Mungu. If you have works. Kama unazo kazi. Then you are blessed. Basi umebarikiwa. By the way, listen to this. Na kusikiza hili. The people we know are the most famous in the world. Wale watu ambao tunawajua ambao wanajulikana sana ulimwenguni. They are not famous for what they got for themselves. Hawako hawajulikani kwa sababu ya kile wamejifanyia. They are not famous for how much they had. Hawatambuliki ni kwa sababu ya kile ambacho walisikia. They are famous for what they did. Wanatambulika ni kwa sababu ya kile walichokifanya. You know Jesus said. Yesu akasema. Foxes have holes. Mbweha wana mashimo. The bands of their have nests. Ndege wa agani wana viota. But the son of man had nowhere to lay his head. Lakini mwana wa Mungu hana mahali pa kuwekelea hata kichwa chake. During that day there were lot roads. Wakati huo hakukuwa na the waladros in those days kulikuwa na waekeshaji manyumba. People who own big mansions. Watu waliokuwa na manyumba makubwa. Do you remember their names? Je unaweza kumbuka majina yao? Have heard about them? Je ushawahi wasikia? But the one who says he the foxes have holes. Lakini anasema ya kwamba mabweha wanao mashimo. Na na ndege wa ngani wana vioka? But he know where to lay his head. Lakini hana mahali pa kuwekelea kichwa chake. Is he obscure? Je yeye 
Do you know him? Unamjua? Is there a corner of the world where he is not known? Je, kuna mahali kwa ulimwengu ambapo hajulikani? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when Peter was recalling the history of Jesus Christ. Na wakati Petro alikuwa anarudia historia ya Yesu. He, saying, he went everywhere doing good. Akasema kwamba alienda kila mahali akifanya vizuri. His works were remembered. Yaani matendo ya kazi yake ilikumbukwa. Even other people who are famous today. Hata watu wa ulimwengu walio wanajulikana sana. Martin Luther King. Martin Martin Luther King. Do you know him because of how Je, much he had? Je, unamjua kwa sababu ya kile alichokuwa nacho? How rich was he? Ama vile alikuwa tajiri? It's not about his riches. Si kwa si utajiri wake. It's not about his property. Si kuhusu mali zake. It's not about his great family. Sio familia yake iliyokuwa kubwa. It's about what he did. Lakini ni kuhusu kile alichokifanya. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Even in Africa. Hata Afrika. Mandela is not known for having so much Mandela hajulikani kwa sababu ya kukua na mengi Not because he was a great lawyer who amassed a lot of property Sio kwa sababu ya mtu ambaye alikuwa amekusanya utajiri mwingi On the contrary because he sacrificed his legal profession Ama ama He sacrificed his legal profession Alitoa sehemu yake ya kazi He sacrificed his life Na akatoa sadaka maisha yake For the sake of other people Kwa sababu ya watu wale That's why he is famous Ndio maana anajulikana And this verse Na hii na naandiko hili Ninatuambia that greatness Ya kwamba ukuu comes out of the works you do Yatokana na kazi unaoifanya Not what you possess Sio kile unachomiliki And I say this Na ninasema hivi There are people who have been deceived kuna watu ambao wamedanganyika. They are always thinking I need to get more. Wanafikiria tu kupata zaidi. I need to get richer. Nataka kuwa tajiri zaidi. And the, the more you have, the more you be happier. Na wanafikiria kwamba zaidi ulivyonazo zaidi utakuwa hapa na furaha. It is not true. Lakini sio kweli. You know Judas was one of the deceived ones. Unajua Yuda alikuwa mmoja walio kuwa ameokoka. When he heard that Jesus is going to die. Aliposikia kwamba Yesu anaenda kufa. Jesus told the son of man is going to Jerusalem. Wakasema kwamba mwana wa And he will be handed over to the priests. Na atapeana kwa makuhani. And he will hand him over to the 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 Romans. Na atawapeana kwa Warumi. And he will be killed. Na uwawe. And he will die. Na atakufa. Jude, and he said several times. Na alisema hayo mara nyingi. And Judas thought. Na Judas akafikiria. Yaani he is going to leave us. Yaani anaenda kutuacha. What are we going to be left with? Tutabaki basi na nini? So he thought since he is going to die anyway. Akasema kwa sababu tu ataenda kufa. I better benefit. Afadhali nifaidike. Let me get something out of it when he is going to die. Acha mimi nifaidike na kitu kutokana na yeye akakufa. Akaenda akamwambia wa Farisi, wa Farisayo. I think I can get this I can get him for you. Anataletea huyu mtu. And uh, will you give me something? Je, mtanipa mimi kitu? Say yes, that pieces of silver. Akapatiwa shilingi 30. But there's some other thing that a piece of silver is that a shilling it's not that a shilling sio shilingi 30 if you get actually uh, a bag of silver ukipata uh, a small bag of silver with 30 heavy coins of silver zikiwa na uzito wa 30 silver that's a lot of money hizo ni pesa mingi sana so he got it na alipata that money was enough to buy a big field ilitosha kununua sehemu ya ardhi because literally he returned it to the priest maana mshoa alirudisha kwa wakuhani and bought a big piece of land walichukua ile pesa wakanunua sehemu kubwa ya ya actually a big portion of the valley of hinom yani sehemu kubwa ya bahari ya jerusalem eh katika kaskazini ya jerusalem so that was money yani ni pesa nyingi and he thought let me make something out of this man who is going away na akasema kama acha nijitengenezee pesa kwa huyu ambaye anaenda but the end of it he died prematurely lakini mwisho akafa siku kabla zake azijafika ama akaji akajitia kitanzi hallelujah hallelujah wow so the thing is ya jambo ni hili if you want to live lives kama unataka count in eternity kama ungataka kuishi maisha ambayo yatahesabika milele let's have a mind to serve the lord wacha tuwe na mawazo ya kumtumikia mungu hallelujah hallelujah if you want to be blessed kama unataka kubarikiwa and is it blessed are the dead who die in the lord na inasema ya kwamba kubarikiwa ni wale wanaokufa katika kristo the, uh, the issue is not dead here na hali si kufa hapa is it blessed are the dead who die in the lord ni wale wanaokufa katika bwana in the lord 
ndani ya Bwana. They were living in the Lord. Waliishi katika Bwana. Living for the Lord. Wakiishi kwa ajili ya Bwana. Serving the Lord. Wakimtumikia Bwana. Their lives were centered in the Lord. Maisha yao yalikuwa kwa ndani ya Bwana. And so they were living for the Lord. Na kwa hivyo waliishia Bwana. So by the time they died. Na kwa hivyo wanapokufa. There are a lot of work serving the Lord. Kuna kazi nyingi sana za kumtumikia Mungu. And those works for them. Na kazi hizo zinawafua. The blessedness is in that they have works that will follow them. Baraka ni kwamba wanazo kazi ambazo zinawafua. They are not going into eternity empty handed. Hawaendi katika umilele bunge. They have works that will follow them. Wanazo kazi ambazo zinawafuata. And today. Na siku ya leo. Your blessedness in eternal terms. Ma kubarikiwa kwako katika umilele. Is in terms of if there are works that will follow you. Ni kwamba kuna kazi ambazo zitakufuata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a man who was actually a famous leech a cricketer in England. Kuna mtu ambaye alikuwa tajiri na alikuwa anajulikana sana. His name was C.T. Stud. Jina lake Stand. Alikuwa Stan. And when he got saved. Na alipookoka. He was a rich man. From his family. Kutokana na familia yake. And through cricket he had also amassed a fortune. Na kupitia cricket pia akakuwa na 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 mali nyingi. Mali nyingi. And when he got saved, Nalipokoka, he decided to give all that money to missions. Akaamua kupeniza pesa zake katika injili. And then he sent himself to go as a missionary to Congo. Na pia akaamua kwenda katika kama missionary pale pale Congo. So first of all he gave all the money to missions so he left without anything. Kwa kwa za alikapeana mali yake Then he gave himself to become a missionary in the Congo. Na pia mwenyewe akajitoa kuwa missionary pale Congo. To be supported by others now that he has given everything away. Yaani asimamue na wale ambao na wengine after amepeana kila kitu chake. Today he is still a famous man. Leo hii bado ni mtu ambaye anajulikana sana. Because of what he did. Kwa sababu ya kile alichokifanya. Not because of what he had. Lakini sio kwa kile alikokuwa nacho. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And our value na thamani yetu your value thamani yako or your net worth in internal terms ama thamani uh, yako is on the basis of your works while you are on the earth inategemea ile kazi uliyoifanya wakati ulipokuwa hapa duniani if you are living kama unaishi Let's live for the blessed higher purpose. Wacha tuishi kwa sababu ya lengo lile la barikiwa la Mungu. Let's serve the Lord with our lives. Lakumtumikia Mungu katika maisha yetu. And ample opportunity. Maana ni ni nafasi muhimu for every one of us. Ya kila mmoja wetu. There is enough opportunity. Kuna sehemu nafasi mzuri. For every one of us. Kwa kila mmoja wetu. To serve the Lord. Kumtumikia Mungu. In some way. Katika njia fulani. You know, sometimes I find Najua wakati mwingine napata it awkward. Ikiwa jambo la kushangaza. When I find that uh, in this country napopata katika nchi hii we have many many Christians. Tuna wakristo wengi sana. But if you hear there is a missionary somewhere. Unaposikia kuna umisha somewhere in Samburu. Mahali kama Samburu. Somewhere in Pokot. Mahali kama Pokot. Somewhere in Tana River. Mahali kama Tana River. He must be a uh, a white. Lazima awe ni mtu mzungu. Coming from America. Akija kutoka Amerika. Or from some country out there. Ama country zingine huko. And yet we are talking about this Christ, this country. Na ile hali tunanena kuhusu Kenya. It is to be 80% Christian. Na ile hali tunasema kwamba nchi yetu ya Kenya iko na 80% wa Kristo. And we are told the Attorney General has registered that the fall thousand denominations christian denominations na tunaambia kwamba yameweza kusajilishwa makanisa na wanda na ninashangaa christians wa kristo where are our works kazi zetu ziko wapi why doesn't it have to be actually in our own interests kwa nini iwe ni in our remote areas in this country iwe katika sehemu zetu za ndani huko when you go to masai you find it is the koreans who are preaching to the masai ukienda katika masai unakuta ni wa korea wanahubiria wa masai when the kikuyus are here in the city na ili hali wa kikuyu wako hapa katika jiji where will our works be kazi zetu basi ni kwa wapi to find that actually where we should be responsible other people from other nations have come to be responsible ninaona aibu wakati naona mahali tunafaa kujukumika watu wa and our church particularly young people grow up to serve the lord some way ni kwamba na na wachangamoto vijana ambao wanaweza kuchukia mungu but we need to raise missionaries from this church tunafaa kuinua missionary katika kanisa hili 
A lot of people don't want to be missionaries because they want to make money. That's why you don't want to serve the Lord because you want to make money. I'm sorry for you. There's a man who told another man that I'm sorry for you. You're a money perish with you. Man, I don't want to be a missionary. I'm sorry for you. There's a man who told another man that I'm sorry for you. When Judas decided to make money, when Judas decided to make money, before he left by his master. That money became the cause of his premature death. Money will never satisfy brethren. And I want to tell you something. Those you are, you are making money. That money you are making. Give it to the cause of the kingdom. Jesus said. That we should stretch, I mean, store our treasures in heaven. We are neither moth nor not. Us corrupt. And people are not breaking and steal. In other words, Jesus again is telling us to have works. Serve the Lord with all you have. Serve the Lord with your money. Serve the Lord with your possessions. Because again, if you don't, you leave them here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the richest man on this earth will still be buried in a small hole. Just like a poor man. Or do we actually say that because this man is so rich, we don't dig a hole of uh, seven and six by four. This, this one, we dig a hole of a uh, because he's, he's rich. Eh? Big a hole of uh, 10 meters by 20 meters. Because he is so rich. Mana ni tajiri sana. We don't do that. Tufanyi hivyo. The poor and the rich get the same size. Ya kwa matajiri na masikini waeko katika kiwango the sawa sawa. So in death, yani katika kifo, your riches don't matter. Utajiri wako hauhesabiki. Your houses don't matter. The size of your house doesn't matter. Nyumba zako hazihesabiki. This one was living in a hut. Huyu alikuwa anaishi katika kichumba kidogo. So let's bury him in actually 3 by 3 by 6. Kwa hivyo basi huyu tutamzika katika kishimo kidogo cha 3 na 6. This one was living in a mansion. Huyu alikuwa na katika nyumba kubwa kidogo. Let's make it 10 feet wide. Wacha tuiongeze ikue 10. And 20 feet long. Na tuifanye 20. Do we do that? Je, tunafanya hivyo? Or are we wrong? Ama tumekosea. What you own Unacho milki, will eventually be a matter that does not matter. Ni jambo ambalo hali hesabiki. What will matter the most Kile kitakacho hesabika zaidi, and matter even in eternity na hata kihesabike umilele, even in this life hata katika maisha ya sasa, is that you serve the Lord. Ni ya kwamba uli mtumikia buwana. When you are here you did something for others. Ulipokuwa ukine watumikia wengine. When you are living for yourself you are manning a very small business. Yani wakati unapo jiishia wewe mwenyewe is when you are living for others that you are doing doing a big business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you are living to serve the Lord, you are doing the greatest business on earth. But I wish I could persuade every brother and every sister, let us serve the Lord. Let us serve the Lord with our money. Let us serve the Lord with our lives. Na maisha yetu. Let's serve the Lord here. Tumtumikia Mungu hapa. And abroad. Na hata uinchi. Let's serve the Lord in our neighborhood. Tuwa tumtumikia Mungu katika mali tunapoishi. By the way, if every person in this church would have a mind to serve the Lord, this church would be too big. Kama kila mtu angelikuwa na mawazo ya kumtumikia Mungu, kanisa hili lingelikuwa likubwa sana. Because even if we decide we want to bring one person. Ni kwa sababu hata kama ungeliamua tu kuleta mtu mmoja. We want to bring one person every month. To church, yeah? every every person, I want to bring one person to church. Every month, just one person. Kila mwezi, then the church will be doubling every month. So that if it is actually 200 this month, next month is 400. Then the month will be 800. Then the month will be 1.6, 1,600. A man to be actually how much? Three thousand two hundred. Then a man six thousand eight hundred. Six thousand four hundred. Yes, million sita, f tattoo. And then a man to be twelve thousand and 
Na hiyo ingine 1012 na kuongezeka. But you know in terms of serving the Lord. Lakini katika hali ya kumtumikia Mungu. Too many Christians have become lazy. Wakristo wengi wamekuwa wavivu. You're just thinking about actually what what you can eat, what you can drink. Unafikiria tu juu ya kilo takachokula na kilo takachokula. We are living like chicken. Tunaishi kama kuku. You know chicken just live to eat. Unajua kuku waishi wale tu. They eat, nakula, they drink, wanakunywa, they sleep, zinalala. No no other purpose. Hawana kusudi lingine. But we are created in God's image. Lakini tuliimbwa kwa mfano wa Mungu. And the Bible says there is a higher purpose. Na Mungu na Biblia inasema kwamba kuna lengo kuu. And this higher purpose is serving the Lord. Na lengo kuu hili ni kumtumikia Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Serve the Lord. Mtumikie Mungu. Even when God talked about the children of Israel coming from Egypt. Hata wakati Mungu alinena kuswa wa Israeli kutoka pale Misri. He told Moses say set my people free that they may go and serve me. Musa akasema kwamba Mungu Every one of you you are meant to serve the Lord. Kila mmoja wetu ametusudia kutumikia Mungu kwa njia fulani. And there is the opportunities. Na kunazo nafasi. What the Bible says. Na hata Biblia inasema. That Jesus said. Yesu akasema. The harvest is plenty. Ya kwamba mavuno ni mengi. But the laborers are few. Lakini wafanyikazi ni wachache. In Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8 we are told. Isaiah 6:8 inasema. That Isaiah listened. Isaiah akasikiza. And heard the Lord speaking in heaven is saying. Akasikia sauti kisema mbinguni. Who will go for us? Ni nani atatuendea sisi? Whom shall we send? Ni nani tutakaye mtuma? I believe our God is still saying the same today. Ninaamini pia Mungu anasema leo. Who will go for us? Nani ataenda kwa sababu yetu? One thing that embarrasses me. Jambo moja ambalo ninaibisha mimi is I send a team of missionaries. Ninawatuma wa missionary to preach for five days. Wahubiri siku tano. Somewhere in Tana River. Mahali pale Tana River. And they went to a village of a people called Wata. Na wakaenda kwa kijiji cha watu wanaitwa Wata. A subtribe. Yaani ni ni kabila ndogo and that village na katika kijiji hicho it seemed they had never heard the gospel ni kama hawajawahi ilisikia neno and so when the chief heard their people with a message na kwa hivyo waliposikia watu wako na neno the chief called the whole village together eh chief akaita watu pamoja we have people with an important message from the government of Kenya. Na kwamba tunao watu ambao wameleta ujumbe katika eh kutokana na serikali ya Kenya. You know some of the people think that they, that that they are not in Kenya. Unajua wengine wengine wanasema Kenya. Yes, they say here is somebody who has come from Kenya. Na wakasema kwamba ametumwa kutoka Kenya. And he said they have an important message for us. Na kwamba wana ujumbe mzuri kwetu. So he got the whole village. Na kwamba akakusanya kijiji kizima. And the brethren shared the gospel. Na wapendwa wakalishiriki neno. Even the local imam came to listen. Hata yule msimamizi wa Kiislamu pia alikuja na alisikiza kimuhimu sana. At the end of it. Na mwishowe. When the article was done. Wakati waliitwa. The chief said. Chief akasema. Huyu Mungu ni mwema. Nani anaambika da? Twende. Na kwamba God is good who is refusing. Let's go. And the people came and all repeated sinners prayer including the chief. Na wengi wakaja na wakarudia ile maombi ya toba na hata chief mwenyewe alikuja. And then after that the brethren actually wakaaka kwa heri. Tunaenda. And the chief asked, How can you speak to us such a good message? And we have accepted this God. And then you leave us. Who will teach us about what you have brought here? Unfortunately, the brethren had to come back because they were actually working on Monday. And we stop sending people that direction. Because unless we have somebody to remain to teach them. To teach, I mean to preach to people. They come to Christ. And there is nobody to continue teaching them but pastoring them. It's no use. The point I'm raising is this. We have princes in this country where missionaries from the river and church Ruai can go and do a useful work. We have princes in this country that are so needed spiritually. 
Yet there are a lot of Christians doing nothing here. Oh, brethren, I challenge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Commit yourself to do something for the Lord before you expire from this earth. And I pray the way the Lord Jesus says, say it. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. <coughs> Actually, that's seven. He said the harvest is plenty. But the workers are few. Then verse 38 he said. Pray therefore. That the Lord of the harvest shall send laborers. Into the harvest. I think we should pray that prayer. But don't you just bow our hands and Pray that the Lord will send the laborers to the harvest. Na in si our country. Tuombe Mungu alete wafanyikazi wa mavuno katika nchi yetu. And if God says it is you. Na kama Mungu atasema ni wewe. Say yes. Basi sema ndio. Oh Father help us. Eh hey, baba tusaidie. Father help us Lord. Tusaidie Bwana. That in this nation of Kenya, Lord, we shall not have people who have not had the gospel. Continue without healing. When we are here, Lord. Lord, appoint some of us, Lord. To join the harvest in these last days. Oh, Father. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you have said, we should pray that the Lord of heaven shall send laborers. Right in this church, we pray, send laborers into your harvest. Lord, it is you who raises your army. And we pray that you will speak to your people. Your people will be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 To the utmost part of the earth. Send us, Lord, to fulfill your purpose. Send us, Lord, that people may come to know you. Send us, Lord, to areas that there's, there's need. To people who need to hear the gospel. Both hearing why. Here in Ruai, Ruai, in our neighborhoods, yetu, and in places mahali, where they have not heard. So help us, Lord. Bwana, in Jesus' name. Jina la Yesu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to finish by saying this. Kwa kusema hili. Isaiah. Isaiah when he heard the Lord saying, abwana, akisema, Who shall go for us? Nani ataenda? Whom shall I send? Nani. He said, Here I am, Lord. Alisema, Mimi niko hapa bwana. Send me. Nitume mimi. I pray that in our are people who be able to say, Here I am, Lord. Send me. When the Lord sends you, you can be sure that he will stand with you. You can be sure that he will promote you. You can be sure that he will equip you. I do remember a lady. She was actually my teacher. In high school. She was my math teacher in Form 1. She was born again. And she loved the Lord. So she used to preach to us. And one day, na siku moja, she wrote a letter requesting transfer akiuliza, uh, from our school. At mwetu, that was Kijabi High School. Ni Kijabi High School to Wajia Girls Secondary School. Apeleko wa, shule upili ya Wajia. You know why she, she said I like to go to a place where there is need. Where I can share the gospel with people who have not heard. So she was invited at TSC. She was invited to the TSC. And she was told. Do you know what you are asking? 
She said yes. Akasema ndiyo. Do you know how difficult that area is? Je, unajua vile hali hiyo mahali hapo ni pagumu? He said I'm, I'm willing to go. Akasema niko tayari kuenda. Do you know men have run away from that place? Unajua watu wamepatoroka mahali hapo? Men not women, you are girl. Yani, men have run away from that place. Yaani wanaume wewe ni msichana. He said I'm willing to go. Akasema niko tayari kuenda. So she went. Na kwa hivyo akaenda. She was the finance said okay if you so want we will transfer you there. Na kwa hivyo akasema kama unataka hapo basi tutakupeleka. So she went there. Na kwa hivyo akaenda hapo. And when she is there. Na alipofika. The head master was a man who had run away. Eh shule wa msimamizi wa shule hiyo alikuwa amekimbia. So she was told okay you take over as the head teacher. Aliambiwa wewe basi chukulia kama kiongozi wa hiyo shule. And so she went there. Na kwa hivyo akaenda mahali pale. She started a fellowship of Christians. Akaanza ushirika wa wapendwa. They begin preaching. Wakaanza kuhubiri. And they got a chance. Wakapata kanisa. They got people getting saved. Wakapata watu wanaokoka. And the school went up. Na shule ikapanda. And became a good school. Na ikawa shule nzuri. They were performing well. Ikifanya vizuri. Because you know they are praying for the school. Ni kwa sababu hakika wanaiombea pia hiyo Now because the teachers committed themselves to Christ they can now access sub better. Na kwa hivyo wale watu walimu walikuwa wamejitoa wameokoka aliweza kuwa nzuri. And so the begin so became so good. Na wakati ilipoendelea kuwa nzuri hiyo shule. That she became famous. Ikajulikana. And uh, so the vice president then. Na kwa hivyo eh rais makamu wa rais makamu wa rais wa siku hizo who was then moi ambaye alikuwa ni moi he said that one who is improving schools akasema huyo ambaye ana ana badilisha shule there is a school in our in our area which is doing poorly kuna shule huko kwetu ambao haifanyi vizuri and so he bulldoze and transfer her to kapropita girls na kwa hivyo akamchukua akampeleka katika kapropita kita girls Kapropita. and then the Kapropita. school actually did way of that a short time na hiyo shule pia ikafaulu wakati so the next thing is there is a school in central province a boy school but it's doing poorly akasema kuna shule katika central ambayo haifanyi vizuri so she was transferred to that other school kwa hivyo pia akapelekwa katika hiyo shule she eventually became like an expert na akawa kama mtu aliye na ujuzi and she get promotion after promotion na napata kupeleka kuinuliwa na kuinuliwa And finally she finished with Meriliki Girls. Na mwisho akamalizia katika Meriliki Girls. Meriliki is a that is an old school. Ni shule ambayo inajulikana. But I've been performing poorly we need that how to go and improve it. Ashule ambayo ingekuwa ikifaulu kuzuri akapelekwa pale. Ayani alijulikana kama mtu wa kuleta kufaulisha shule. And she rose in high profile. Na akajulikana. But how did it start? Lakini ilianza vipi? by desiring to serve the lord. Kwa kutamani kumtumikia Bwana. And the lord appeared to organize her promotion. Naye Mungu akaweza kufaa kupanga kupandishwa cheo kwake. And I'll tell you something. Na niwaambie. That when we accept to serve the lord. Tunapokubali kumtumikia Bwana. We don't actually lag behind. Haturudi nyuma. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God goes with us. Maana Mungu anatembea na sisi. We become a people who are known because we have works. Tunakuwa na watu ambao wanajulikana maana tunazo kazi. But God also takes care of our welfare. Naye Mungu anashughulikia haja zetu. And that reminds me of another young man. Na hiyo inanikumbusha kuhusu kijana mmoja. Who after A level. Ambaye baada ya shule ya Felt a very strong call to serve the Lord. Akasikia akiwa na msukumo mkubwa kumtumikia Bwana. He was called to university to do engineering. Alipoenda katika university kufanya engineering. He said no, I won't go because I feel the Lord want me to be a preacher. Akasema sitaenda maana anasikia wahimizi kwamba Mungu anataka niwe mbovu. And his family was so mad about it. They said that you cannot go into school. Na familia yake ilikadhabika sana maana ilisema hujaenda shule. Can't you remember of this family? Na usijihesabu mtu wa familia hii. And that boy suffered. Huyo kijana aliumia. He went and begin working with an organization. Akaenda akaanza kufanya kazi na kampuni moja. And the leaders of that organization whom I knew they failed him. Na hao na kampuni hiyo ikamwangusha. And there's some time you stay he has no food. Na wakati mwingine ingelikaa bila chakula. He doesn't know where his rent will come from. Na hakujua na hakujua rent yake itatoka wapi. But he was faithful to his calling. Lakini yeye alikuwa mwaminifu katika mwisho wake. And he kept serving the Lord. Na aliendelea kumtumikia Mungu. And when the season of testing was over. Na wakati nyakati za kujaribiwa zilipoisha. The Lord to open doors. Mungu akaanza kufungua milango. He find sometimes money in his house he doesn't know where it came from. Angelipata pesa nyumbani mwake na hajui zimetoka wapi. Sometimes he find an envelope with a lot of money. Na pengine ange na wakati mwingine angepata bahati kuna pesa nyingi. Ikiwa imerushwa hapo chini ya mlango wa nyumba yake. Little on. 
by the grace of God. Kwa neema ya Mungu. He got invitation to preach abroad. Akaalikwa kwenda kuhubiri nje. And he became actually somebody who was going abroad and in this country abroad and this country abroad and he finally ended up a wealthy man. Somebody from England decided to buy him a plot here. Akaomba na toka hapa na kuhubiri nje na kuhubiri nje mwisho akawa mtu mkubwa ambaye and the one who brought him a plot brought him bought him a plot in Karen. Akawa mtu wa kumnunulia sehemu ya ardhi mahali pale Karen. And he ended up na mwishowe living in Karen. Akawa kuishi pale Karen. In one acre of land. Katika hekari moja ya overlooking the Gong Hills. Ambayo inatazamia inatazama milima. In a big mansion. Ikiwa na nyumba kubwa sana. And God took care of him. Na Mungu akamshughulikia. When if whenever he is whenever he is going you know this is a man who is well taken care of. Yaani mahali popote anapoenda anakuwa ni mtu ambaye ameshughulikia. You know the devil cheats people that when you serve God you must be poor. Unajua shetani adanganya watu ya kwamba mtakapo mtumikia Mungu mtakuwa maskini. The silver and gold belong to our God. Dhahabu na fedha ni za Mungu. And I'll tell you something. Na niwaambie. When you choose to follow the Lord. Utakapoamua kumtumikumfuata Bwana Mungu. The Lord also chooses to walk with you. Naye Bwana pia anachagua kutembea nawe. When you walk hand in hand with the Lord. Na unapotembea pamoja na yeye. You accomplish exploits on earth. Utafanya makuu hapa duniani. But meanwhile God will be taking care of you. Na Mungu naye pakuwa atakuwa anakushughulikia. You become somebody here Utaka... and where is in eternity. Yaani utakuwa mtu hapa na pata na pia milele. One of the things I say this brethren is. Jambo nalo sema wapendwa ni hili. Let us be con Wacha tusi Let us not be content. Just to exist. Kuikuishi tu. Let us be let us know we are doing something important on this earth. Wacha tujue kwamba tunafanya jambo la muhimu sana hapa duniani. Commit yourself to do something important. Something that will make a difference in the lives of other people. Jitolee kufanya jambo la muhimu ambalo litaleta mabadiliko katika maisha ya watu. Give what you can to the kingdom of God. Yaani toa yoyote unaloweza na watu wengine. And do what you can for the kingdom of God. Na ufanye na watu unaloweza katika ufalme wa Mungu. You not regret in eternity. Na hutajuta. Final question is this. Swali la mwisho ni hili. Blessed are the dead in the Lord. Wakubarikiwa ni waliokufa katika Bwana. From now henceforth. Kwa sababu kuanzia sasa. That they may rest from their labors. Watapumzika katika kazi zao. For there are works for them. Maana kazi zao zitawafuata. Do you have any works that will follow you in eternity? Je, uko nayo kazi ambayo itakufuata wewe milele? Do you have a desire that you should have works that will follow you in eternity? Je, uko na tamani una tamaa ya kufanya kazi ambayo itakufuata milele? I want to tell you this. Acha nikuambie. We can all have works that will follow us in eternity. Tunaweza fanya kazi ambazo zitatufuata milele. It's a matter of commitment. Ni hali ya nikujitolea tu. Because the Lord. Maana Bwana is the one who gives us the strength to serve him. Ni anatupatia nguvu ya kumtumikia. The Lord. Bwana count on our willingness Mungu ahesabu anahesabu kujitolea kwetu We are willing tutakapotukubali He is able to do the less Ata ako tayari kufanya hayo mengi He gives us the strength Atatupatia nguvu He gives the opportunities Na atupatia nafasi All we need to do is tell the Lord Bora tu unataka useme Bwana Like Isaiah said Kama vile Isaiah alisema Here I am use me Niko hapa nitumie Here I am sent me Niko hapa nitume He is my money use it Dini hizi ni pesa zangu situmie Here is what I have use it Hii ndio niliyonayo tumia is my life use it lord haya ndio maisha yangu yatumie bwana i want us to pray a prayer of commitment ningependa tuombe ombi la kujitolea to commit ourselves to the lord kujitolea kwa bwana so that we shall serve him on earth ili tukaweza kutumikia duniani and live for a purpose higher than ourselves na tuishi katika lengo zaidi zaidi ya yetu so that we shall have work that will follow us in eternity na ili tuwe na kazi ambazo zitatufuata milele in the name of jesus katika jina la yesu hallelujah hallelujah Thank you Jesus. Asante Bwana. Thank you Heavenly Father. Asante Mungu. As we bow our hands in prayer. Tunapoinamisha nyuso zetu. If you like to pray this prayer, Lord. Ningependa tuombe ombi hili Bwana. Here I am. Niko hapa. Use me. Nitumie. I want to offer my life. Ningependa kuyatoa maisha yangu. In whatever manner you want to use me, Lord. Kwa njia yoyote ambayo ungetaka kunitumia. But I want to live a life. That is meaningful on earth. A life serving your purpose. In Jesus name. You like to make that prayer. I want you to just raise up your hand. Just when you are sitting. And then I want you to pray. I'll do it and tell the Lord. I'm offering myself to you. Ya kwamba najitoa kwako. 
I want to fulfill your purpose. I want to live for you. I want to serve you, Lord. Here I am, Father. Use me as you would want, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, Father, for those who are raising their hands, Lord, I pray for your divine grace upon their lives. I pray, Father, they shall live lives that are useful, lives of purpose. Lives Will give you honor and glory. Now, Lord, release your spirit upon them, Lord. Release your favor upon them, Lord. Release your vision upon them, Lord. May they hear your voice, O Lord. And Father, may you use them for your glory. That Father, they shall have works that will follow them. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Master. Amen.